What's up everyone? Welcome to another Minecraft Explained video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about biosphere integrity and land use change. And a topic in which no one asked for, but we decided to do it anyways because it's kind of important. Um, anyway, we are going to be mining to show the interconnectedness of biodiversity through mining. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to be mining in 1.17 because we have never seen all this stuff before um, and I'm going to be mining here, Hippo is going to be mining here and it's not fair because she already found out. Um, so it's going to be a mining competition, we'll be here for 10 minutes, I'm going to set a timer on my phone. At the end we are going to see who has the most stuff. So we have like pretty much equal stuff, or all of our weapons and tools, and same amount of stuff. So it's really mm -hmm. a competition on how lucky we get. So we are going to start in three, two, one, go. Ooh, okay. Can I mine above myself? Uh, you basically mine every single ore you find. What is that? Okay. Okay, I've also like have a point system kind of thing. So Yeah. That was okay, that was before I know anything about one point. What is this? That was before I know anything about like the new ores in 1.17. Coal is gonna be one point, iron's gonna be two, redstone's gonna be three, gold is gonna be four, diamonds are gonna be five. Sorry, lapis is gonna be five, diamonds gonna be six, and emerald's gonna be seven. All these new nuggets and stuff. I'm a little confused. I don't. I haven't got anything new. I don't think. I got all like the new raw nuggets. And stuff. That's. Mm. I don't know what they mean. What do you mean? The reason why we chose mining was because it has like kind of a double meaning. Um, mm -hmm. With the way, the way we are, from not promoting, but the way we are catalyzing. Catalyzing. Is that the right word? Yeah. The way uh, we are catalyzing. How uh, about taking advantage? Yeah, like we exploiting, are mining exploiting. and exploiting minerals, which increases habitat loss. Yes. So, like mining itself is causing biodiversity loss. Yes. But we're also using it to represent uh, biodiversity loss. Yes. So, do you want to explain actually what biodiversity is, like, generally? Biodiversity is the abundance and distribution of species. So, abundance is literally, like, how many there are of the species. And um, distribution is, like, the spread. So, um, you're talking about kind of, like, the evenness, how many of each species there are. Like, if one species dominates and there are, like, few of other species, for example. Um, it takes into a lot of different things into account. It's not just the amount of um, species. In that realm as well, we're also talking about the interaction of the species and how they create mm -hmm. the ecosystem. And the ecosystem strengthens the biodiversity of the area. And then we have functional and also genetic biodiversity. Equally important to maintain strong biodiversity as a whole. I would say functional diversity is more important, but yeah, <laughs> I mean genetic is important too. Uh, yeah, but again, like what you said, your last point, like um, diversity would be unimportant if we didn't have interactions and like if species didn't have relationships because you could put um like rabbits and foxes and like squirrels in a marine environment and it might be classed as biodiverse because like there's multiple species and let's say there's a high amount of them all but because they're in a marine environment they're not gonna it, they're not gonna survive or interact so yeah it matters what species there are it matters their relationships how they whether they support each other 
I don't know if that was a good example, but <laughs> yeah, and how they benefit from ex- like existing with each other. And that's mm-hmm. when it comes to um, relation, like relationships as well, stuff like um, like competitive relationships, mutual prey predator stuff like that. Forgot the word intra yeah. intra specific, I believe, and inter specific. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> I, I think, I think. Yeah, uh, no, I can't. I, don't, I can't even remember. I remember the I words. I think we but I switched do not off remember. literally after we finished our last assessment. It's like we are forgetting yeah. everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Dripstone pot. Oh. Huh? Oh. That sounds interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna. You also want to explain why biodiversity is important for us? As humans, because we are selfish people, and the only reason why we care about the environment is because it benefits us. Because we're also animals. Don't you just love it? Yeah. So that so, scared me for I mean, biodiversity is like what? literally is this? the most important thing. Like, <gasps> I remember my teacher said, like, biodiversity is going to get us before climate change gets us, and like. There's not enough focus on it. And mm-hmm. I mean, it, biodiversity practically enables the ecosystem to uh, work because um, it gives us ecosystem services. So it mm-hmm. regulates water, regulates the climate, um, it regulates habitats, it helps habitats thrive. It influences the food chains, which influences how we eat. So we know there's like a crisis with fishing and um, yeah, the fishing industry. So it's realistic that, you know, one day there will be like, what's the word? Um, Regulations on how much fish we can eat or yeah, Yeah. it's it's quite serious. Like, um, it affects a lot. I think there's been like crises. I know there was one in the US where, um, or the muscle in it was yeah, it was the muscle industry and like as in like you know the muscle, the sea, the sea creatures, the muscles, um, where they just all died and they just stopped reproducing. So the whole like millions of dollars were lost and the like economy collapsed and. So yeah, there's like a massive economic influence. Oh shoot, I fell into water. Oh, it's just no. water. I thought you fell into lava. Yeah. That's ten minutes. And how bad? Ah. Oh. Okay. I feel like I got this in the bag. I don't know why. Okay. Before we, before we do this, do you want to? Um, I'll explain a little bit about the equilibrium. So. Okay. Throwing Mm -hmm. off the equilibrium in our ecosystem, which is basically like the balance of different species. Um, For example, like in a food chain, you have like your plants, and then you have your herbivores, you have your secondary predators, like primary primary predators and then secondary, secondary predators. And then you also have like apex predators, which is humans. Um, so if we throw off any one of those balances, like we'll throw off, let's say, oh, one has overpopulated, one is going extinct, we'll throw off the entire ecosystem as a whole. And Mm -hmm. with that, um, it has like detrimental impacts on other population. And this is where positive and negative feedback loops are really important. Um, Yeah. So, for example, the really famous um, example, which is the Yellowstone National Park, where they introduced grey wolves back into mm. the National Park because they took the grey wolves out, which therefore threw the, eco- the balance out, like, the eco- like threw the equilibrium off. And introducing the grey wolves back into the park um, the ecosystem was somewhat balanced and they started to thrive and species returned, grass returned, 
it is really important to have that balance. I think balance is actually more important, or like in my opinion, mm-hmm. like the most important, um, rather than just like restoring any species. It's like restoring mm-hmm. species to their former population in relation to the ecosystem that they're living in. So yeah, that's that's it. You wanna see who's the winner now? Oh, I'm scared. Should we write them on a sign? Should we write a number? Okay. Okay, do you want to hit down at the same time? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Done. Yeah! Oh, nice. <laughs> I think you. I'm not gonna lie, I think it was my coal. Yeah, he used the coal because I skipped a lot of coal and iron because I was like, oh, I want to find the good stuff. All my redstone, actually. I got so much redstone. Oh. Interesting. Mm. Did you get a lot of lapis then? Mm-hmm. It was so close, though. It was close. That it is really close. close. Okay, so you see how like we have all these different minerals, right? In this chest. Mm-hmm. Diamonds are like the flagship species because they are the ones that are like, you know, the most seen seen as the most valuable. The most prized. You bring the most yeah. value. But stuff like iron and wood, wood is like a, a keystone species because without wood, you can't do many things. Like try living Minecraft yeah. without wood. Like, that's nearly impossible. You have to find everything. Mm-hmm. It's like a keystone species and stuff like these that are not necessarily too important. They are important, but not as important. They're like flagship species, but flagship species are really just the ones that makes the most money from tourism. So the flagship ones are the ones that like help balance, but they're not necessary for the balance. Yeah. Keystone species are the ones where if they were lost, there would it's be like, ecosystem um, massive. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. the flagship species, to be fair, is really just to bring the money. Yeah, I, I, I mean... My opinion. Yeah. It's from, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It is important, we'll get, but like, it not just looks money, but We use them for money nowadays because they're not good for anything else. No offence to those species, but... Yeah. Like all the cute animals, like mm-hmm. pandas and I mean orangutans are important, but like pandas and stuff, they mm-hmm. important, but they're not as important as like you know a dung beetle. Yes, we love dung beetles. But very important. they the panda as itself brings the money to help dung beetles. Yeah. So for land use change, let me take you on a little journey. A journey on how humans have developed over the years. We were cavemen, hunter-gatherers. We respected the world around us and gave back whenever we could. We were once part of the ecosystem, the circle of life. Then we decided to be efficient. We saw the potential in the world around us. We gathered the resources we used to hunt and tried to sustain them for as long as we can. We tried to understand the nature. Seeing how the life would be easier, we settled down, created farms, and relied on agriculture for survival. As time passed on, the population grew, and we expanded our land to shelter for everyone. We wanted solutions, how to be more efficient, how to feed more people, how to utilize the land. Then the Industrial Revolution happened. We found technologies to develop the land for our needs. We built buildings and farms, places for humans and only humans. Those who created it had no idea how impactful their inventions had become. They had no idea how reliant these technologies are to humans. And that is almost impossible for us to survive in pre-industrial days. We don't know the result of this journey. We don't know if this journey will end. What we do know is if we continued, 
there will be no traces of how this journey began. It will be impossible to witness how far we have come. Our land would be covered by our developments and polluted by our developments. And that would be the direction we're heading in if we've continued, if we didn't do something, anything about it. This is the outro. When to intersection. Well, thanks guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> You try to kiss me or something. <laughs> With you into your brain. You try to read into my brain. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope this Minecraft explains is useful or entertaining. I don't know. Entertaining. No, we're here for learning. Are we really qualified for education? Uh, yeah, we're like one third of the way into a degree. That's, that's, we're one third of the way qualified. Definitely. You just basically. That's enough. That's definitely enough. Completely butcher the first year. Yeah. Anyway. Psych. See ya. <laughs> Bye.